As part of our mission, uh, we seek to learn, to be curious, to engage in important conversations, scholarship, and action that will lead to positive change. So that's what brings us together today. Uh, our convening is a full agenda of really fantastic speakers. We've got more than a dozen invited guests. We have Harvard faculty, uh, students and fellows, and speakers from civil society, the public sector, and academia. And we're building our community. And so we're very grateful that you're all part of that community, whether you're here in person or with us online. So welcome to the conversation, and we look forward to engaging with you today. Nearly all of the sessions have space for questions and answers. So, well, questions, hopefully some answers, maybe just more questions. So in the room, we'll have microphones online. We'll ask you to use the Q&A function of the webinar. Uh, to allow our introductions to be relatively brief, we're, we're limiting the bios as we introduce people, but you can find those by looking at the QR code at the table with your phone, or if you're online, by just looking at our, our website. Um, the event is being recorded and will be made available later. So at this time now, I'd like to introduce Professor Mark Elliott. He's the Vice Provost for International Affairs and the Mark Schwartz Professor of Chinese and Inner Asian History. He was appointed Vice Provost in 2015. Professor Elliott oversees and works to advance international academic initiatives, extending the global reach of Harvard's research and teaching activities. In this capacity, he serves as the university's representative in negotiating agreements with foreign governments, receiving senior international delegations, and representing Harvard to peer institutions and alumni worldwide. In addition, he shares responsibility for supporting the community of international students, scholars, and faculty in Cambridge and Boston, as well as guiding Harvard's international advancement and overall global strategy. As a scholar of China, Professor Elliott is an authority on the last four centuries of Chinese history. His research encompasses the history of relations between China and its nomadic frontier, with special attention to questions of ethnicity and empire. I'll welcome Professor Elliott to the podium. Thank you. I thought you said brief introductions. <laughs> Thank you so much, Louise, for that, uh, for that uh, introduction. And uh, a very warm uh, good morning and welcome uh, to everybody here, especially to our guests uh, who have come from, from far away. Uh, to be here uh, with us uh, today uh, up in what we call the glass box. One of the nicest convening spaces, in fact, uh, newest convening spaces at, uh, at the university. I'm really, really pleased to, to be here for uh, this year's uh, Global Health Symposium, the second uh, of these annual uh, symposia that uh, Louise and her staff have initiated uh, this year's theme, Partnerships in Action. Uh, and I want to again thank you, uh, Louise, for giving me the chance to say a few words. Uh, in the time that uh, you've been in this role, uh, you should know that uh, uh, Louise has really moved both thoughtfully but decisively uh, to reinvigorate uh, HGHI, uh, not least by instituting these, uh, these symposia. So my congratulations to you and Belinda and everybody. Where's Belinda? She's, there she is. Uh, everybody on the HGHI uh, staff <clears throat> for uh, the hard work uh, that has gone in, months of hard work, uh, to put together uh, the rich and varied program that we uh, have today. I think for, for anybody, uh, whatever your interest uh, in global health, uh, those of you here in the room, those of you uh, joining us uh, remotely, uh, no matter what form your interest takes, no matter what area you're interested in, there's, I think there's going to be something for you uh, today. Uh, I want to give a special welcome to our keynote speakers, Dr. David Walton, uh, the U.S. Global Malaria Coordinator, uh, part of the U.S. President's Malaria Initiative. Um, I don't know if Dr. Rocio Science is here. Yes, Dr. Science, uh, uh, Executive Director of the Network uh, of the Americas for Health Equity. Uh, thank you so much for joining uh, today. Uh, a special welcome as well to His Excellency Austin Demby, Minister of Health from Sierra Leone. On the agenda, it says that, quote, speakers will share their own perspectives. They do not speak for the university. Well, perhaps we get to make one exception 
uh, to that statement, to that rule. Uh, as uh, the uh, Vice Provost for International Affairs, Harvard's Foreign Minister, uh, <laughs> I, I, I have the privilege of speaking for the university, actually. Uh, and in that capacity, I want to say that we are very pleased at the university at what HGHI is doing, and we totally believe in partnership. In fact, we rely on partners to get our, to pursue our mission of research, teaching, and learning. Uh, it's true for everything we do here in Cambridge. It's true for what we do broadly in the United States. Uh, and certainly, it's true for what we do outside uh, the borders of this country. Uh, here, um, I'm, uh, I'm looking for Ophelia Dahl, whom I met earlier, and uh, thinking about uh, uh, partners in health, one of our most uh, important uh, partners when it comes to bringing Harvard research in medicine and public health out to the world. Everybody here is very familiar with the amazing record PIH has uh, put together uh, in terms of saving lives and improving health outcomes uh, over the last 40 years, work in which countless Harvard faculty and students have been involved. I'm looking here also at Dr. Sikulele Moyo uh, of the Botswana Harvard Health Partnership. Uh, BHP um, is another of our key partners. In fact, it's one of the few that actually carries the word partnership in the, in the name. Uh, and it's one with which I am especially familiar. I, I'm privileged to sit on the board of BHP and was there in Jabarone a few months ago with uh, Dr. Moyo. Um, uh, he was very, very busy, uh, but I made a point of getting a, uh, another tour of the lab so I could get a picture of the bench where he and his team discovered the Omicron variant in December 2021 in, in the lab there. Uh, BHP's beginnings, of course, uh, lay in combating the AIDS epidemic, uh, where again, uh, the partnerships fostered through the PEPFAR program ended up saving many countless numbers of, of lives and bringing better health to, to millions. In this connection, let me mention another partnership, uh, this one in South Africa, uh, where the Reagan Institute, in partnership with the University of KwaZulu-Natal, has formed the Africa Health Research Institute uh, to carry out critical research uh, in the prevention of HIV infection, and now also related uh, NCDs, uh, to stimulate awareness among at-risk populations. I'm thinking also of uh, our dear colleague, Paul Farmer, uh, late Paul Farmer, uh, a friend of uh, so many of us here today, a close colleague of, of Louise's and obviously of Ophelia's as well, and many, many others gathered here. Uh, we met just a week ago, a number of us, on the other side of the river in uh, the Longwood Medical Area to uh, help inaugurate uh, another partnership uh, between the Harvard Medical School and the University of Global Health Equity in uh, uh, Butaro in Rwanda. Uh, and uh, uh, that program, uh, a 10-year program generously funded by the Cummings Foundation, will combine teaching, research, uh, and training that will go far uh, to help realize the ideals that Paul espoused and that we all espouse of better understanding the causes of global health inequity and working together to address them. There are many, many such examples of collaborations and partnerships linking Harvard to the world. Uh, in the business world, you might call this leveraging. Uh, it's really how we get things done uh, uh, here. Uh, it's, uh, it's just another way of saying we're working together and learning from each other at every step. Some of you here today may remember another remarkable moment of partnership, one that was more, uh, uh, more local uh, from early 2020, when representatives of the entire greater Boston biomedical community gathered uh, at the Joseph Martin Conference Center on Avenue Louis Pasteur. On the 2nd of March, 2020, just remember, early March 2020, what was happening uh, we all got together, in, uh, a, a couple of hundred people in one very small room uh, to initiate the Massachusetts Consortium on Pathogen Readiness, uh, known as Mass CPR, to deal with the impending pandemic. And, and even as we met 
and took a, a historic photograph in the, in the, in the atrium there. Uh, you could hear people talking to each other, wondering, should we, should we even be here? Is this, is this really a good idea? But I think it was a good idea. Uh, happily, it didn't turn into a super spreader event, although it, it might have. Uh, but it, uh, it had such an effect, of course, on uh, helping to energize uh, the response, not just of Harvard, but of all allied institutes, universities, hospitals uh, around here uh, to respond to, uh, I won't say an unprecedented pandemic, but to certainly the, 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 a, a pandemic the likes of which, which none of us living had ever seen. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the results of this have been hundreds of papers uh, two very important vaccines, the Moderna and J&J &J vaccines, came out of that work. Um, and it was also done in its early stages, I want to emphasize, with partners in China at the Guangzhou Institute of Respiratory Health, another good example of global partnership. And even within the university, we depend on partnerships across departments, divisions, centers, and schools. HGHI uh, is a good example of that. And if you look at today's program, you can see how uh, effectively uh, the Institute has drawn on the strengths of many schools at Harvard, uh, not only uh, the Harvard Medical School, although of course the Harvard Medical School, but also the Harvard School of Public Health, uh, the Harvard Kennedy School, the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, and the Harvard Law School are all represented in one way or another on the program uh, today. Uh, I would call this a, a whole of Harvard uh, uh, event. Uh, the acronym might, might be read WO. Uh, uh, to get all of Harvard together uh, across disciplines and fields uh, to collaborate across sectors and, and uh, with like-minded colleagues uh, uh, all over the place, uh, here and abroad. This is what makes our efforts to solve problems, complex challenges, uh, really meaningful and effective. It's really the only way our efforts are going to be meaningful and effective. I want to wrap up. I just want to say one last thing here, which is that you often, we often hear the word ivory tower uh, uh, lobbed uh, at the university. If you look at the origins of this term, actually it used to be a good thing, uh, people, uh, people would say, but uh, the last 70, 80 years it's, it's acquired a, quite a negative connotation and uh, it's, uh, it's a, an epithet now, uh, sometimes lobbed at Harvard or other institutions, implying a sense of disengagement and arrogance and, and uh, care, not caring of what was going on in the so-called real world. Based on what I know, uh, my 20 years here, uh, especially the last nine years as vice provost, uh, I frankly doubt that this term ever really applied to Harvard. Maybe it did 300 and some years ago. I, I, I don't know, uh, maybe. But if it ever was true, it certainly has not been true here uh, for a long time. It's certainly not true now. Uh, Harvard and the wider community of experts in global health with whom we partner is unquestionably engaged in the world, full time, full bore, and with a full heart. What you will hear today will leave you in no doubt of that, I'm, I'm confident. So let me again express a welcome to everyone here uh, in person, to welcome to everybody here online. Let us all make the most of this fantastic event and use the opportunity that Louise and the HGHI has given us to find new opportunities to help heal the world. Thanks, everybody.